time my Squishy Bee family. Today is April 9th, 2022 and this is Squishy Bee. Welcome to this week's prayer video. Man, we've got a lot to cover today. Uh, so much stuff is going on in the world. Uh, let's just start with uh, some of the stories and the prayer requests and then I'm going to leave off with the mess that's going on in China and show you some footage of that and then we'll get to praying for all of this stuff. So first uh, we're going to start in India where a masked gunman killed a pastor at his home in front of his family. Uh, around 7.40 p.m. on March 17th, as Pastor Yalam Shankar spent time with his family, five masked men came to his house, calling his name. As he exited his home, the men shot him in the chest and slit his throat. He died minutes later, and his wife and one of his sons witnessed uh, the murder. He was killed as the Hindu festival Halika Dahan, which celebrates the triumph of good over evil, well that's right, ironic, uh, was being celebrated in the pastor's village. Pastor Yulam is survived by his wife, two sons, and his granddaughters. Pray for the pastor's family to be strengthened by God's word and his presence as they mourn their loss. Pray that they are able to continue earning income from the small plot of land that they have, which the pastor used to farm. Pray for justice and for the pastor's faithfulness to Christ to be made known throughout the village. And I hope at the very least that uh, the, the, the news of what has happened here uh, draws people to change their hearts. Uh, sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't. Christians are becoming a very small, small minority and it is becoming more and more hostile for Christians in many, many countries every single day. It's happening so fast. I just cannot get over how quickly we are getting on the brink of tribulation, uh, of the Great Tribulation. And uh, the rapture is coming very soon. And I think just any day we're going to be hearing the introduction of the Antichrist, who uh, the son of perdition, who is going to sign that seven-year agreement. And I think that at that point, we're out of here. That's, I think that's going to come any day because we're seeing so much of the setup of exactly what is said to happen during the seven-year tribulation. How people could not see the checklist being checked off, check, 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 of all of the stuff that is supposed to happen during the tribulation and not be like, hmm, maybe the Bi there's something to this Bible thing. Uh, I think it's just that they don't know. A lot of people just don't read the Bible and they don't know. So it's important that we tell them and show them this Bible prophecy coming true so that they can get saved because this is the purpose of all of this stuff happening is to get to, for people to believe that God is true. God is real and that he is in charge and that people need to get their act together quickly because uh, very soon he's going to be uh, there, your chances are going to run out. So their chances. So we need to get through to people quickly. Okay. So the next one, Iran, um, an addict is healed by Christ. After his mother passed away from cancer, Manau, um, Manau chair, I think I'm pronouncing that right, battled grief by drinking heavily. Desperate for peace, he reached out to a Christian media uh, ministry, requesting prayer and asking many questions about the Christian faith. The Christian counselors comforted uh, Manaucher and shared the gospel with him, encouraging him to pray whenever he was tempted to drink. A month later, Manaucher placed his faith in Christ. Praise God. I have found the peace of Christ, he shared. I have been freed from my addiction. I only wish I knew Jesus sooner. Manaucher shared the gospel with his family members, and they also trusted in Christ. Oh, that's so amazing. I, you know, one of the things that 
uh, is a really big key to getting people saved is when they see someone day after day addicted to something and they see that they cannot do it on their own and then they get saved and instantly they get cured of their addiction and when nothing else has helped before that makes people believe that like nothing else when they see that happen because it's proof before their eyes and it helps their belief and this is happening all over the world people are uh, just getting cured of all kinds of addictions uh, because they turn to Christ and Christ is the answer and people see that so if anyone knows someone who is uh, struggling from addiction or they have a terrible illness, chronic terrible pain from some sort of horrific disease, keep that in mind because sometimes that the purpose of these, these trials that they're going through is to get other people saved because they, people see them uh, day after day and they know that they've tried everything and nothing has worked and then if they suddenly have something work they want to know what that is and when it's Christ they might suddenly just start to get it so anyway I love hearing stories where like this it's very encouraging uh, pray for these new believers to continue growing in their faith as they reach out to others with the hope they have in Christ we will definitely pray for them today. Uh, okay, now to West Africa. Fulani Christian beaten and rejected by family. Jalem is a Fulani who gave her life to Christ in 2020. When her family discovered her newfound faith, they harassed her, beat her, and eventually disowned her. That's very common. Uh, Jalem has now moved in with an uncle, and a local pastor is helping her finish school. Jalem shared with frontline workers that though sometimes she struggles to get by, she hopes to attend Bible college after finishing school. Oh, God bless her. So cute. These young kids, these young kids that, that um, despite their environment, still find their way to Jesus and are then become an example for the rest of us and are inspiring. I, I love to see that. Uh, there is some hope for this generation, even though we we see the crazy stuff that's going on with this generation here uh, in the U.S. Uh, there's hope for some of them uh, still. Pray for Jalem to remain firm in her faith and, I'm sorry, amid the suffering and rejection she has experienced. Pray that she can show the love of Christ to her Fulani family members and that they may come to know Jesus as their Savior and Lord. I just want to say something very quickly here while it's on my mind. Do you notice the common thing that happens with a lot of these Muslim families and Hindu families uh, that when one of them decides that they, they are interested in something other than the Muslim faith and they want to explore and learn, uh, what else is out there? What what could be uh, outside of that? What they've only known? They they beat them. They uh, they disown them. They kick them out of the house. They kick them out of their villages, or they imprison them. Well, the difference between that and the Christian faith is if someone who was a Christian was to go and you know, they, they were to kind of get lose their way and start to kind of drift off, uh, as young people especially tend to do, and, um, you know, the prodigal son sort of thing. We don't disown them. We don't uh, get violent with them. We just love on them and, and hope that and pray for them and try to encourage them uh, to come back into the fold. That that's the difference, and so people should kind of look at that and be like, "Why would you want to be with such a violent, hateful place?" And I think that's what's happening. A lot of people are starting to catch on because God is moving in these countries, and 
using the internet, using missionaries, and now with once they get Christianity in there, and like in Iran, how so many uh, people are becoming Christian in Iran, and it spreads like wildfire, just like the Bible describes, and they start to hear that there is there is another way, and it's it's all about love and acceptance and not about violence and control uh, so that's it. then once they hear that then they they start to want to know more and then as soon as they 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 get it and they believe and the holy spirit starts to move in then nothing is going to stop them and they're some of the most bold and brave people because they have been in that environment. They're used to this violent lifestyle and communities that they've been around. And now they have hope that they've never had before. And the truth and a belief and something to live for. And they've been, you know, they're, they're stronger crowd of people because they haven't been babied and pacified their whole life like the West. <laughs> um, so they, so it's a perfect mix for evangelizing. So it's, we just need to pray for them and for their safety because it's such a horrific, hostile environment for them. Now I just, I know that we talked about this guy last week. But I wanted to just kind of update you on him because I've got some more information on this man. Uh, if you remember the Christian YouTuber in Indonesia that we were talking about uh, last week, Muhammad Kachi, uh, man, he is in some really bad shape. And we're hearing more and more about what actually went on there and I just thought we should just continue to pray for this man and this is some of the more information that I've come across it says International Christian Concern ICC has learned that on April 6th an Indonesian Christian YouTuber was sentenced to 10 years in prison for a viral YouTube video that allegedly offended Muslims across Indonesia uh, this is one of the updates that he was actually sentenced to 10 years in prison. Uh, Muhammad Kachi, 56, is a former Muslim cleric who converted to Christianity in 2014. After his conversion, he began uploading videos to YouTube criticizing his former faith. He was arrested in Bali last August following a sermon video in which he allegedly insulted the uh, prophet Muhammad. On April 6th, the judges of, uh, I'm not sure if I pronounce this, uh, Siamis uh, District Court in West Java Province agreed with prosecutors to slap him with a 10-year sentence for his offenses. Thousands of Muslims surrounded the court in support of the harsher uh, prosecution of Kachi. Yet yeah, they want him executed. They're... They're losing their crap completely. There, that's that area is one of the um, the worst areas for there being. It's all Muslim and violent extremists. Um, so it's extremely difficult for someone like this. And but the the internet is an amazing thing sometimes because the people will never hear about Jesus in some of these areas if it weren't for brave guys like this. And uh, because he got on there and he actually was telling some of the truth that people had never heard before because they they suppress uh, some of the really evil stuff in that religion. And uh, this guy was actually telling some of the truth and they, they don't like that. They don't want, want that. They, you know, Satan's all about lies, so... Uh, during his detention, Kachi was treated in an inhumane way. He was allegedly beaten and tortured by a police official named Napoleon Bonaparte. I mean, seriously, this guy could be <laughs> the reincarnated version of that guy. It's really odd how he's got this name and he's like the most corrupt and vicious satanic individual. Uh, who was detained in the same prison due to a corruption case. 
Bonaparte forced Kachi to eat his excrement. Lovely! So nice. Uh, the police named five suspects in the alleged beating and torture of him after his maltreatment was revealed to the public. According to UCA News, Martin Lucas uh, Sim Simonjontek, Simonjontek, uh, I don't know, uh, Kachi's lawyer said the sentence was harsh and that his client would appeal the sentence. In other such cases, sentences have been lighter, he said. We will appeal the verdict, or at the very least, the sentence imposed on him. While it is not unusual for Christians to fall victim to Indonesian's dra uh, draconian blasphemy laws, a Christian-turned-Muslim cleric who was arrested last August for insulting Christianity, Muhammad uh, Yaha Walani, uh, was sentenced to merely five months in prison in comparison. The inconsistent standard embedded in Indonesia's legal system is self-evident. Uh, Andreas Harsono, a senior researcher for Human Rights Watch Indonesia, told ICC the Indonesian government should promptly repeal the blasphemy law. Both Christian preacher Muhammad Kachi and Muslim cleric Yawa uh, uh, Waloni need not to stay a single night in prison because of the toxic law. I should say so. The right to speak one's mind is essential and must be protected. This sort of treatment and punishment under Indonesian law is a shameful reality, said Timothy uh, Carothers, ICC's advocacy manager for Southeast Asia. As long as Indonesia continues to enforce religious harmony through regulation and persecution, it will continue to achieve the opposite. It's interesting how people are starting to catch on uh, in some of these countries that freedom is kind of a good thing, freedom of speech, and they're starting to try to get free speech where our country's reverting back to uh, where we don't have free speech, uh, where we were once the example of democracy and freedom, we're now going the opposite way. It's, it's really odd. Uh, Bonaparte subsequently uh, confessed to the attack, explaining, Anyone can insult me, but not my Allah, the Quran, the Holy Prophet, and the Creed of Islam. Hence I pledge to take any action in a measured manner against those who dare to do so. Kachi's legal team, however, agrees, alleges, I'm sorry, alleges that prison officials also played a role in the attack and in an attempted cover-up, CCTV was disabled in the room where Kachi was attacked, and cell guards were dismissed early from their duties. That sounds a lot like uh, the, the guards that were in the Epstein situation. Maybe it's the same guards. <laughs> I mean, come on. These, there's so much corruption in these places, including here, obviously. Uh, that whole Epstein thing is a joke. It, it, it's never going to amount to anything that this um, chick that was working with him uh, she is um, she's never going to see real justice and she's never going to speak out against any of the people that she was uh, covering up for because that's the people all the way to the top people in charge right now are involved in that and that, that we're even seeing how she was working with Disney I see um, that uh there was some, um, like, cruise ships uh, with uh, children's scuba diving tours at the Epstein Island. And Disney wants to say that we're just overreacting and that we're making connections where there aren't connections. Sure, Disney. Sure. Uh, all right, moving on. Elder Zhang uh, Chunle, Love Renai Reformed Church in Guayang. Shackled to the podium, Olympians of Faith. This is a picture of him before uh, he was thrown into prison. Uh, Elder Zhang Chulai from uh, Guiyang Renai's Reformed Church was supposed to be released after an 11-day administrative detention in March 2021. Yet he never left his detention center and instead was charged with fraud. On March 16, 2021, several members of uh, Gulang Rene's Reformed Church were having a Bible study at a rented room in Wenzhou, 
hotel. When the police interrupted their activity and accused them of organizing an illegal gathering, the police checked their IDs and cell phones before taking some of them to the Yan Anzong Road police station. At 5 p.m., Elder Zhang Chun Lai from the church went to the police station to negotiate his members' release, but was detained himself. The next day, the police went to Zhang's house and confiscated his computer, cell phone, and some valuables. His wife, Yang, uh, uh, I King, I King, I don't know for sure how to pronounce that, I'm sorry, uh, was notified of his administrative detention, which would last 14 days, later changed to 11 days. While the other three Christians from his church, uh, Chen Guangguo, Li Jinxi, and Li Lin were released after three days of administrative detention. When Zhang's wife Yang went to pick him up on March 28th, the police told her that he had already been sent elsewhere for investigation. The next day, the police notified Yang that her husband was now being criminally detained and charged with fraud. His arrest was not made official until May 7th. Yeah, they, they always just make up charges. They can't... Uh, just charge you with being a Christian, they come up with other stuff that they just make up. Uh, this is an example of that. On July 3rd, his wife stated that detention center officials had repeatedly refused to allow his attorney to visit him. She said that the attorney attempted to see him four times and was denied even though his requests complied with the laws. The last time his attorney was able to meet with Zhang was on June 4th. Officials claim that Elder Zhang was being interrogated. Wonderful. I can't even fathom what that involves. Uh, and that uh, they could not arrange a meeting. Oh, this poor guy, really. We need to pray for this guy's safety. I, I hope that he's not in there being tortured and horrible stuff. And that's why they're keeping him from being seen. Because they don't want him to see the condition that he's in. Uh, last October, Elder Zhang's lawyer went to uh, Guilang uh, to retrieve legal documents pertaining to Zhang's case from Yunyan District's uh, Procuratorate? Procuratorate? I'm sorry. Somebody help me there. Uh, according to the recommended indictment, the Public Security Bureau in Guiyang accuses Zhang of not having the status of state-vetted religious clergy. Yet he held religious gatherings and swindled believers of 100,000 RMB, which is uh, 15,642 in U.S. dollars, committing fraud. On October 29th, Zhang's case was sent back to Union District's Public Security Bureau for further investigation. Uh, Zhang's lawyer went to visit Zhang at the detention center but was denied access because Zhang's case allegedly endangers national security. Good grief. What? How did they get that out of this? They're, they're reaching here. On the same day, Zhang's lawyer met with the state security officers in charge of Zhang's case. The officer informed Zhang's lawyer that during the investigation, the authorities found that Zhang's action also allegedly involved subversion of state power. Hence, they have established another case against Zhang. What? Where do they come up with this? Just from a pastor. Just <laughs> unbelievable. I can't even. I can't even. On January 5th, 2022, Elder Zhang finally got to see his lawyer again at uh, Joyang City Second Detention Center, more than six months after their last meeting. Oh, I can only imagine what's happened in six months' time. Zhang is doing great, and his peace and joy in his heart. Oh, that's good to hear. He wishes to pass his greetings to churches that have been praying for him. He was in good spirit as, his, as he sang songs of praise. Aw. Despite his unjust treatment by the Chinese government, Elder Zhang once said, I do not have a grudge in my heart against the police. I love them as well as state security officers and prosecutors who handle my case. I pray for them. I love and pray for my country, China. Oh, see, what a good example of a representative of Christ. That, that should make us all take pause and think for a moment. Um, 
Elder Zhang's case is noted by the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom. He was marked as being detained for his religious identity and activity. The house church leader is vocal against religious persecution. It is unknown how much longer he will remain incarcerated. Uh, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. Elder Zhang Chunlai's last tweet before his arrest. Mm. Man, I hope that he's okay. And I hope that they they can get him out of there. But, man, we're talking China here. And they will make up all kinds of stuff to throw people in these terrible concentration camps and stuff and then use them for, like, uh, medical experiments and they take them for organ donations. It's it's horrible. So I, I hope that he... Maybe if, if people's... Um, attention is on specific people like this. Sometimes they will hesitate to do stuff because they know people are watching. That was one of the reasons why uh, they they say it's good to write to these prisoners because at first, when I first started writing to prisoners in some of these um, prisons where it's illegal to be Christian, um, I was a little hesitant because I was like, is it possible that writing to them would make them get treated worse because they're mad that people are writing to them? But they say, no, it doesn't. It actually helps because they realize that people are watching them. And so I, again, was a little nervous when I first started writing to officials there um, on behalf of uh, getting these people released. And I was like, man, is this going to help or just instigate the problem? And it just, it depends on how you word things and make sure that if you do write to officials, um, it's, you can write to prisoners, that's one thing, but you can also write to the officials on behalf of the, the prisoners and ask for their release. You, you should read very carefully on the Prisoner Light, uh, Alert website on how they tell you to use your words because it's really important that, that you know how to speak to them uh, so that they will see it as the world is watching but they don't take it in a way that they will be more angry with the people and it's worked people are getting some people are getting released um, including some that I wrote to the officials about. So now I feel a little bit more encouraged about doing that. So I will think I'll continue to do that. Um, and you should check it out. It might be uh, something good for people who don't have a lot of money and they want to do something to help but they can't afford to donate. That might be one of the things you can do because it's it's free to write. You use your words and also free to pray. So uh, you're still doing something. So, uh, next one, Coptic Christian stabbed while protecting son from attack. A Coptic Christian was stabbed several times after trying to save his son from a Muslim neighbor holding the 17-year-old against his will. Maggie Fathi uh, Zahada Awad Allah was stabbed seven times on February 15th after his neighbor, uh, Mahmoud Abdel Rahman Fargali, attempted to stab his son. Magdi is now safely recovering at home despite being brought to the hospital in con critical condition. Uh, they're asking us to pray for a quick recovery for the man who is stabbed, pray for healing for the family from this traumatic event, and pray for the Muslim neighbor to come to know Christ. So we're going to do that at the end when we do our prayer. Uh, next one, urgent prayer needed for Sri Lankan Christians. Good grief, man. It is chaos in Sri Lanka. I don't know if people are aware of what's going on there, but it's a disaster. Uh, wait till you hear what's going on here. The Christian community of Sri Lanka is asking for your urgent prayers. The country is in total chaos, says uh, Sunil, an Open Doors partner in Sri Lanka. Pastors in our network have been calling us asking for help to make ends meet. On April 1st, the president of Sri Lanka, uh, Gadabaya Raja, Raja, 
Pasca, Paxa, sorry, uh, declared a state of emergency. The proclamation allowed authorities to make arrests without warrants, enter and search property, seize property, suspend laws, and issue orders that cannot be questioned in court. This announcement was made after people both young and old flooded the streets leading up to the president's residence on the night of March 31st. Are you noticing a common thread here? This is going to be everywhere. This is how they do it. Remember in Canada how they got away with doing stuff that was not very democratic and uh, following the freedoms uh, that we're used to by declaring a state of emergency. That's how they get away with this stuff. So it's not just happening here in the West. It's happening in uh, countries like this. And people are just not noticing because they don't really usually look into these countries that don't involve them or that isn't talked about in the news. So people are really unaware that this is a worldwide thing that Satan is using and the Antichrist will use in order to gain control over the whole world. Remember, the whole world will be forced to choose a side and choose the mark of the beast or be beheaded. And that is what's starting to get set up right now. And you'll also see that uh, it talks about in the Bible how that uh, the food will be very expensive or not available at all and that you're only going to be able to get it by having that mark of the beast. So for them to do that, you have to control the food supply. And while everybody's thinking, well, Bill Gates bought up all this farmland here, and it's like an American issue. As you can see, it's happening in little places like this even. So this should be a big eye-opener to people how this is worldwide and not just happening here and there. Um, so... This is a really good sign that how close we are to the rapture because they're, they're taking control of the, the food right now and people are losing it. People are starting to revolt. And you'll see that here and you'll see it um, in China in a minute when I, I get to that. It's starting to happen just like it should happen in the tribulation. So we've got to be on the verge of the rapture any second. Um, okay, it goes on to say, over the past few days, the hashtag Go Home Gota has been flooding social media platforms as people uh, uni unanimously uh, demanded the Sri Lankan president, Gotabaya uh, Rajapaska, uh, resign from duty, Sunil says. Protests are drawing larger crowds and, and they are growing angrier with each passing day. Long lines for gas, diesel, and gas cylinders have become a common sight all over the island. Well, all over the world, I'll add to that. And people are struggling to make ends meet as inflation soars. Yep, worldwide, that's happening everywhere. Daily power cuts have lasted up to 13 hours per day last week, disrupting people's lives daily lives significantly. Additionally, protesters are demonstrating against food shortages and ha um, that have left people in desperate need. Uh, again, that's happening also in China, and people are starting to see here that uh, food is becoming out. You're not finding things at the stores. Uh, little by little, more and more stuff is not available. Well, uh, it's these lockdowns, for one, that are causing problems like in China, where they're just locking them down and they can't get food at all. Um, well, just keep in mind that people here, I think in the back of their mind, they think, well, it's not happening here. Even if food is gets sh scarce in the stores, I can just order from Amazon. I can just order online. Well, you'll see from what's going on in China that it, that, that will get to a point where you won't be able to get stuff online either because people are getting up at the crack of dawn to try to quickly get online and order stuff and the stuff is gone really quick and it's like lines it's like a grocery store lines but online and if you're not there 
you lose out. And what you can get is very little to begin with. They're, uh, they're literally starving to death to a point where they're so on the verge of death of starvation that they, they're taking to the streets and they're just looting the stores and everything. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. That I'll be talking about that in a minute. Uh, I'm just drawing some um, conclusions about various places looking very similar. And you'll see a pattern here. What started off as a protest soon turned violent as the police retaliated by spraying tear gas and firing water cannons at the protesters, and people set fire to several police vehicles in response. Subsequently, the police arrested 54 protesters, some of whom were labeled extremists by state media. Does that sound familiar? They're calling people extremists here, too. And I've been saying from the beginning that that is what they will use in order to be throwing people in jail just because they're Christian or just because they're conservative or just because they, they question the mainstream narrative. They're going to call you an extremist or a terrorist. And so to me, it's just so mind-blowing to see this going on in little tiny places like Sri Lanka. Doesn't this make you think um, that clearly Satan is behind all of it? It's worldwide. That's, that's clearly the Antichrist spirit at work everywhere. And it should increase your belief that the Bible is true word for word because it's it's been very hard for people, even Christians, I think, to picture the whole world being under control by one dude because everybody has such freedoms in some of these countries, like ours. But as you are starting to see it being picked apart day after day after day, one less freedom, one less freedom, one less freedom. It's getting easier to see how this is a possibility. Uh, and you think, well, it's, you know, just these big countries that are having these problems and these riots and stuff, they just happen in big cities like New York City and L.A. and stuff. And there'll still be these little countries that are mind their own business and they're not involved in all of this Um Nonsense. Well, here's an example of the little tiny countries that are involved, too. So you can see from both sides of the spectrum uh, how every single person, great and small, rich or poor, free or bond, that is what God says. Every single person will be uh, forced to take this mark or die. And uh, they will be forced to recant their faith. And you can see where it, um, what God means by endure to the end for those who are the tribulation saints that are stuck here during tribulation. When they say endure to the end, I would imagine that's going to involve a lot of what we're seeing in some of these examples, which is things like torture. So... Do you see the urgency of how we need to pray and do our best to get people saved so they're not stuck here during that time? Because they're going to, Satan can't make that choice for you. That is the rules. You have to make the choice, but he sure can do everything in his power through torture, through starvation, through uh, doing terrible things to your children in front of your eyes anything they can to get you to change your mind and choose him. And it's going to be so hard to do. If, it, if people, A lot of people think, well, just chop my head off then. I don't care. It's quick and then I'll be in heaven. I don't think it's going to be like that. As you can see from these other examples, it's not just quick kill people. He's, he's going to want to try and try and try to get you to choose the mark of the beast. He's not going to just be like, do you want to take the mark of the beast? Nope. Okay, well then, to the guillotine with you. No. I think he's going to try a whole lot of really terrible things to get you to change your mind. And so um, 
we need to uh, pray for these people. And um, when, when he talks about people uh, being imprisoned and when you, if you didn't, um, when you visited me in prison, when you visited one of these people in prison, you did it unto me. And when you gave someone who is thirsty a drink, you did it unto me. Well, you can see where that is going to be the tribulation period. Because people will be thirsty. People will be hungry. People will be in prison and ready to give up. And uh, it's going to take some strength and courage to go and visit people in prison for fear that you might get thrown in there too. Uh, just like we just saw with this other pastor. He went to go and defend his other church members and he they took him and threw him in jail too. Gave him bigger charges than they did. So that's an example of how it's going to be and why God says that, you know, these are the things that people during the tribulation are going to have to do. But, I mean, obviously... This is going on now also, and it's a good example for us today as well that that we should be helping people that are hungry, people that are thirsty, people that are in jail, and writing to these prisoners in these places, like I was just telling you from that uh, Prisoner Alert website, that is an example of that. You're basically visiting them, and you can't go with there in person, but... Getting that letter might be the only uh, peace and love and encouragement that they get. So it's it means a lot for a two dollar stamp on a on a letter. It, it may cost a little bit more than a normal letter within your own country, but to send to another country. But it's worth it to send these letters out because knowing that that person might be looking forward. Maybe I'll get a mail today and, and get some sort of scripture and encouragement. And um, they may be ready to give up that day, but then read your words of encouragement and it gives them a little boost so they can keep going. So, um, anyway, uh, I'm sorry to, to get off topic there. Uh, when photos and videos of police officers attacking protesters and journalists emerged on various social media platforms, it sparked nationwide outrage. And in response, President uh, Rajapaska uh, issued an island-wide curfew. Uh, here come the curfews. Okay, that's another thing you're going to see, martial law. And we, we've been suspecting that and expecting that for some time. And that's going to be a worldwide thing, too. Uh, the National Christian Evangelical Alliance of Sri Lanka released a statement expressing deep concern over the recent developments in the country, particularly the declaration of a state of emergency and the sudden imposition of an uh, island-wide curfew. They urged the government to desist from imposing restrictions on peaceful protests and encouraged them to revoke the state of emergency and prioritizing finding viable solutions to the economic crisis. Since the statement, the president has revoked the state of emergency, but the situation is still incredibly uncertain and Sri Lankan believers are, asked, are asking us to pray. Man, does that not sound so much like Canada, where... They're treating protesters uh, horribly and invoking the state of emergencies to have ex an excuse, um, a legal excuse to do things they wouldn't normally be able to do. It's um, scary times. Uh, Christians are involved in this struggle to survive. The Christian community was rocked in 2019 after terrorist attacks on Easter Sunday. And now many believers in persecution hotspot regions uh, belong to low-income households who have been worst affected by this economic crisis. The skyrocketing cost of living has left people scrambling to make ends meet. Having milk at home has become a luxury. Having gas, a rarity. Sunil shares. Yesterday, Sunday afternoon, we received a phone call from a volunteer who shared about his family's unusual lunch, boiled noodles and lentil curry. 
We have to manage with whatever we have, he said when asked about this uncommon combination. Many people are doing exactly that, surviving with whatever they have. The work carried out by Open Doors Field Partners has also faced challenges because of the country's situation. Some before visiting persecuted pastors and believers in the field have paused to ask themselves, do we have enough fuel to go and come back? Do we have enough time to wait in line for fuel before we go? And I'm telling you, this fuel crisis is, is going to be an issue worldwide. As much as we don't agree with the way that Biden is doing things with the pipeline and what have you, it's a much bigger picture than that. It is a worldwide antichrist satanic system set up. So uh, don't get too caught up in the taking sides with the, uh, the politics and what have you. I mean, pick the side of Jesus and the word of God, because uh, that is really where we should be standing on the word, not not taking political interests, because I got to tell you, they're they're corrupt on both sides. As much as clearly, there are some sides worse than others. Uh, there, it's basically just a controlled opposition versus blatantly obvious. That's that's your two side choices, and. Uh, so they, they have to make it look like you have a choice when voting and stuff, but really there is no choice. Uh, God makes a choice, honestly. He, he puts in power, allows who he wants in power to serve the plan that he has. So as much as it, you know, they obviously cheat and, and put whoever they want in there, they wouldn't do it if God didn't allow it. So just keep in mind that God is control over all of these things in all of these countries. As you can see, that they don't like the guy that's in charge here either because he's corrupt. Well, you're going to see corrupt people becoming the ones in charge worldwide because they're the ones that the Antichrist needs in power to be able to go along with his plans. So you're going to see every country is going to become where they're in the, the dude in charge is going to be satanic because otherwise it wouldn't work for the Antichrist system. So he's setting it all up in place, and that, again, should be encouraging that the rapture is near, because if he's putting all his people in place, that means it's almost showtime. So keep that in mind. Uh, Sunil says, field partners have been taking rechargeable flashlights to every training program so that the lessons can continue during power outages. Pastors and believers who attend these training programs have had to pay special attention to their travel arrangements as not many uh, buses are operating due to the diesel shortage. By God's grace, the work carried out by field partners can, has continued, albeit with some limitations, Sunil shares. Throughout the crisis, the church has been upholding the country in prayer. Please join hands with us in prayer as we ask God for a change. Uh, open Door Partners in Sri Lanka are assessing the ground situation and looking into more ways to help. It's got to be getting harder and harder for them to get anything accomplished like that. All right, uh, next one. Uh, this I saved the craziest for last here. Shanghai residents revolt over zero COVID lockdown. Videos show moms looting stores for food after being confined to their homes for 22 days. And cases are still going up thanks to Omicron. These people cannot go without food for that long. It, it, they're starting to get to a point of certain death. And when that happens, people will do anything to survive. And we're starting to see that happen. People are starting to lose it. Uh, panic buying turns into looting at supply points as residents fight for food. Locals also seen breaking COVID barriers, which stopped them going between streets. Severe lockdown has failed to curb COVID cases as Omicron prompts case record. Shanghai had 23,600 new cases Friday, and official data likely understating it, understating it. Infected babies and under sevens taken by docs and separated from their parents. Ugh, wonderful. 
Public disorder broke out in Shanghai last night as the Chinese Communist regime's draconian restrictions to in eradicate coronavirus cases left residents running out of food while cases continue to rise. China's largest city and financial center has been under lockdown for 22 days, despite public health officials warning that the Omicron COVID variant is so infectious that it cannot be wiped out by lockdowns. Shanghai residents are only allowed to leave their homes once a day to collect food, and infected Chinese children have been separated from their parents in a desperate attempt to stop the virus spreading. Again, this is just more proof that, you know, we, we can see that there's another purpose to the lockdowns. It's not for the purpose of controlling this plague. The, obviously, it doesn't work. So, uh, a video yesterday also showed a COVID protection warden beating a corgi dog to death with a shovel because its owner was infected with coronavirus. Ugh! You've got to be kidding me. Ugh, what is going on? Ugh, God protect these people and these animals and these children. Here, it's just, it's, I can't stop having nightmares over this stuff. It's just a nightmare that doesn't end. Uh, I can't even imagine the people there. I mean, it's just us watching it gives us nightmares. I can't even imagine being there. COVID cases in China's largest city rose again to a record 23,600 new infections recorded on Friday, according to official statistics, which are likely to be understating the true amount of infections. By the way, do you notice they always have to use, you know, you know that these numbers are not accurate. This is just a number that's being placed there for its some symbology. Um, there's 23 is in everything. And the six, you know, two times three is six. They're, it's, they're always putting these numbers out there, uh, either 33 or 23 or 239, uh, 666, or they'll put like 06, 0.66. They'll put, put that in there somewhere. Uh, so pay attention to this sometimes. You can see that, that the people in charge of putting out this information, the news and everything, that they're all obviously in on it. They're they're putting. They always use these numbers of dates. They do stuff on certain dates because they have. Uh, it's all. They're all. Satan is all about numbers. Uh, the 26 million people under lockdown in Shanghai have continued to complain about food shortages due to a lack of couriers to carry out deliveries and uncertainty about when lockdown curves may end. And desperate residents looted emergency food supply points last night, according to videos shared on and swiftly de deleted from Chinese state censor censored site Weibo. The videos also showed crowds of Shanghai residents storming stores for undelivered food parcels. Yeah, they, they wasted a lot of the food, um, by the way. They, the stuff never made it to the people, and there's a reason for that. You know, they... They're doing that on purpose, just like they, they're going to do everywhere. They're going to keep control of all of the food. They'll make some excuse of why the food isn't getting to people, but they're really the ones, they're deliberately keeping the food from getting to people because they need to have control of the food. They need people to be desperate. They need chaos so that they can create order by bringing in the Antichrist who will solve everything, right? Uh, Mr. Nelson added, my family had three deliveries that were booked to deliver today. Two group purchases of meat, seafood, plus one individual purchase of soap and shampoo. All three were canceled. On Friday, the U.S. State Department said in a travel advisory it was allowing non-emergency staff and their families to leave the Shanghai consulate due to the surge in cases and the impact of restrictions. It advised U.S. citizens to reconsider travel to China due to arbitrary enforcement of local laws and COVID-19 restrictions. Anyone traveling to China has got a death wish anyway. I, I wouldn't go there for nothing. Nothing. We have family in the Philippines, and uh, to try to travel over there, there's no way making a stop in China for a long, long time. No way. Not a safe place. 
Other videos posted by locals show crowds trying to break through barriers put up by the authorities to stop Shanghai, uh, Shanghainese straying far from their homes. And one Weibo user said they were, oops, sorry, my alarm's going off. My pillow alarm, sorry about that. Um, other videos posted by locals show crowds trying to break through barriers put up by the, oh, I'm sorry, I already read that part. Uh, and one Weibo user said that they were ordered to take down a clip of supply center uh, scuffles from Weibo after orders from on high. After garnering thousands of comments and reshares, user Rhodes took down the post and wrote a simple caption, deleted it. So I just wanted to show you some of the footage of what's going on in China and then I'm going to come back and we're going to do our prayer. Uh, I've got to take my pills here real quick too because uh, otherwise I'll be having seizures in the middle of this uh, recording here. So uh, I will be uh, right back after showing you this footage. <laughs> Okay, let's pray for all of these people. Now, uh, if you don't mind and want to join me, I know this has been kind of a long video. Father in heaven, thank you for bringing us together to be able to pray as one group and one voice for all of our brothers and sisters in Christ that are struggling and are being persecuted around the world. First, Father, I'd like to uh, pray for the wife and sons and the family of Pastor Yalam Shankar who was murdered as they watched in horror. Please strengthen his family with your word and your presence as they mourn their loss. Please bless them financially and help them to continue earning income from their small plot of land that they have, which the pastor used to farm. We pray for justice and we pray that this pastor's faithfulness to Christ will be made known throughout the village and be used for your glory. Next, Father, we'd like to thank you for um, Man Manocher and his family who are new brothers and sisters in Christ in Iran. We pray that you continue to help these new believers to grow and to put your protective hedge around them as uh, Iran is a dangerous place for Christians right now. May this brave young man who beat his addiction with the help of the Holy Spirit inspire many, many more to seek you for help and find salvation. Thank you for this family's example to us. Next, Lord, we'd like to pray for the brave young girl in West Africa, Jalem. Please help Jalem to remain firm in her faith despite the rejection and the suffering that she's experiencing. We pray that she's able to show your love to her Fulani family members, and we pray that they come to know Jesus as their Savior and Lord. Next, Lord, we like to pray again for our brother in Christ, Muhammad Kachi. As we hear more details about this brave brother in Christ, we ask you to please continue to protect him while he's in this terrible prison. And we pray uh, that his imprisonment it can be used for your glory and maybe many other prisoners could be uh, led to salvation through Christ by hearing the truth from this brave man. Please soften the hearts of the guards and the other Islamic prisoners who mean him harm. May their eyes be open to your word and their ears be willing to hear your truth. 
Next, Father, we'd like to pray for Elder Zhang Chun Lei, who is still being imprisoned for his faith in Jesus and being kept on false charges. We pray that you watch over him and keep him safe. And we pray that you keep watch over his wife, Yang, also, as she copes with managing without him. May his time in prison be used to glorify your name, and may it bring others to salvation. Next, Father, we'd like to pray for Magdi, the brave copy, the Coptic Christian father who was brutally stabbed while attempting to rescue his 17-year-old son. Uh, we pray for the, the family of, of this brave man. And uh, we'd like to pray for a quick recovery for Maggie from his stab wounds, and we pray for healing for the whole family from this traumatizing event. We also pray for the Muslim neighbor to come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Next, Father, we'd like to pray for the, our Christian brothers and sisters in Sri Lanka. We pray that you help them with their rising cost of living. Please provide them with food. And we pray that, that you help the fuel crisis there to be resolved soon. Please protect those who are speaking out about the current situation there and keep them safe. We pray that their voices are heard and that the authorities there do not succeed in silencing them. We pray also that the leaders of this country are able and willing to identify and implement solutions. And we pray that you give them wisdom and accountability as they get about this task. Lastly, we'd like to pray for the people in China who are desperate for food and medication and all kinds of needs that they have there. Uh, please provide them with the food and meet their needs and please keep them safe. Um, those who are speaking up and standing their ground on the evil satanic CCP, please protect and heal the victims of this terrible regime. Uh, I pray that you please calm the hearts and and soften those who are um, that are in charge, the police there, the authorities, people that are doing these things, that are killing animals and, and attacking people and that are keeping them in situations where their people are starving and they're letting the food, food go to waste. I pray that somehow you, you get this food to the people instead of it just sitting there rotting like it is. And I pray also, Lord, that that this whole situation uh, with with the COVID there is not used as an excuse for the CCP to um, do even more evil to these people. I pray that you help them to utilize this time and this situation for them to get closer to you. I pray that somehow uh, the Christians that are in China, that they are able to reach these people when they're at this desperate time and maybe they would be more willing to look to you for answers when other times they may not have been. Uh, so I hope that this uh, situation is at least uh, could be used for your glory in the end, Lord. And I, I just like to pray for all of those listening. I thank you for them. And I thank you for the opportunity that we can all come together to pray like this. And I pray to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, thank you so much, guys, for joining me this week. Uh, I know that there's a lot of stuff going on, and uh, we'll keep praying, and I will keep bringing you as much information as I can. I would also just wanted to let you know that um, there's also some, some food riots similar to what's going on in China going on in Peru. So I will try to keep you updated on that. And I'm seeing some really weird stuff going on in the UK um, that I'm going to investigate and see if I can get some information and bring that to you as well. So uh, until next time, guys, I love you. God bless you. Stay safe out there. Keep praying. Keep looking up. We're almost there, guys. The rapture is going to be anytime soon. So please just hang in there, and I will see you in the air very soon. God bless you. Bye-bye.